Mm. Wednesday in X. <laughs> yeah. Made me it made me feel upset. <laughs> I was like, oh no. What is this? I, I hope she's 18. <laughs> God damn. I was like, damn, you know she is, but God, yeah. look I mean, yeah, she wouldn't be in the movie if she wasn't. Yeah, for sure. No, she's in she's in her like mid twenties, but I know I Googled uh, it. Yeah, but I, I saw her titties. I was like, "Oh my god, what a shit! I don't like it." But no, it still make, doesn't make you feel right. But God, damn. <laughs> that's how you know you're old. That's when yeah. you look at tits and yeah. feel bad about 100%. it. One hundred percent. Those tits are too perky. I don't know how I feel. About <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Welcome to another episode of Slash House. Today we're going to be reviewing Maxine, talking about the also prequel, uh, Pearl, and the other movie, X, which it's a sequel of. But before we go any further, make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out a lot. And also, leave a comment. Talk about you know how ridiculous we are, how ugly AJ is, things like that. Uh, how handsome fucking I am! Gorgeous, gorgeous. You are gorgeous. I know. Pull out those little fucking. Mm. Mm. I don't even want to. Fit. I want to pull out all the things Ooh. that you got going on. Uh, but that's it. We can just go right into it. As soon as we get the poster up, we can plow right into it. Anyway, Maxine, I went to the theater. I paid too much money for this movie. Well, it's because I pay too much money for any movie. Because the theaters are way too expensive. When I bought two tickets for this thing, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. I know we talked about theater shit before, but god damn, bro. I just it's just crazy how much it is when I'm like, man, there's just so many other things I'd rather. It's like you if you wait a little bit, you can rent this fucking thing for way cheaper. Like it goes on video demand in like probably three weeks after it's in the theater. You can rent it for like like twelve dollars and watch everybody and anyone can watch it with you. So I spent like thirty dollars total for two tickets, probably more than that. And then we fucking of course bought that expensive that pop popcorn and shit. It's just ugh, I don't know. I don't want to go to a whole soap box, soap box, soap box about it. Uh, but anyway, I <laughs> stumbled on that one. Uh, but did you, where did you see that? You saw it at a theater, right? Mm -hmm. Well, of course you did, but like, where did you see it at? They have AMCs down there, right? That's their big one. Yep. AMC Regal. Regal. I think I went to, I think I went to a Regal theater. See, I've got Regals here too. Or maybe that's just the one that's called. It's like the Marcus. I, I don't give a shit what the theater is or what they represent i just you're showing a movie i want to see because not every theater is going to show a movie that you want to see right. so sometimes it's like limited showing so i could give a i don't have any loyalty to any of that shit if you're going to show a fucking movie i'm going to go back you kind of have to see yeah it. you kind of have to not have loyalty when it comes to movie theaters for that exact reason because maxine is like um it's one of those movies that it got a wide release but it's not going to play at every movie theater like bad boys was it four now? Is that the fourth one that just came out? Uh, it doesn't matter. Point is, a big block. It's not going to be on every theater like a big blockbuster. So yeah, I get it. And most of the time, when I go to the movies, it's not for one of those big blocks blockbuster movies. I'm kind of in that point where I'm like, I'd rather watch the stupid fun movie like that at my own home. If I'm going to go to a theater, it's going to be something like this. Um. Yeah, but I love this trilogy. I could have, I could have watched this at home. I could have watched this at home, but the I'll, I'll say without without any spoilers, this is definitely the weakest one 100%. out of all three. This is hoping. a fucking this movie. It's okay. Hold on. It's this Maxine's not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination. It's fun. It gives you a lot to fucking chew on. But following Pearl, 
it's pretty lackluster in my opinion. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, the acting is fine. Um, Kevin Bacon is a fucking creep in this movie. He's kind uh, of a standout for me. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I think it's just because it's Kevin Bacon. He always, you know. Delivers, yeah. But no, what I'm saying is it's Kevin Bacon. He's a he's a well-known, well-liked individual. So it's like seeing him. I mean, I didn't know it was him in the when they first introduced him. Really? When that like so I, mean, I said no spoilers, but like in the car, I didn't know that was him. Right. I've noticed it was him in the in the restaurant. I knew it. I knew it. Right. I figured it out. I was like, oh, it's Kevin Bacon. But yeah, no, before that, I have a fucking clue. I mean, I recognize that gangly bastard anywhere. <laughs> he's extra gangly. Like, he's, he's extra. He, he looks sick as fuck in this movie. <laughs> he looks like he's got a couple c- cases of the cancer in this movie. I mean, he had a cigarette in every scene. There wasn't a time he wasn't smoking. He's so got, I, I know that they're really driving home an image, but like, yeah. The gold teeth didn't bother me. I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. His white suit bothered me, honestly. How, how, I think that was really distracting for me is how high he had the waistband for his pants. I know that was like the style back then, but he's, like, he's old though. He had the like, he's fucking old, old now, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. He had it up to his nips. <laughs> just yeah. like you steeper. get to a certain age and your waist actually goes above your belly button and right underneath your nipples. What you fucking heard me. <laughs> The older you get, the higher your waistband oh, gets. You, me. <laughs> you fuck. I gotta explain it to you. You see old people all the time. They're fucking waist. Yeah. They're, they're they have belts all right underneath their fucking, right underneath yeah, their chest. They're fucking. Shit. Their tie is being eaten like Fred Mertz in yeah. front of their fucking pants. Like that's just how people. It's like wear this shit. man. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh my god! Don't. Oh stop my god! Doing this. Stop. Do you me. look like every lawn gnome I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Is that so fucking confusing, man? <laughs> Come on. Why are you ah. talking to your hand like that? Ah, it's because I'm teaming up with AJ, who's Italian. Is that what it is? Natural, yeah. Yeah. He's Come Italian by proxy at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just use that in every language. Yeah! It works. It works for most. Nah, man, this movie was... This movie's really good. It's a really nice whodunit mystery Mm -hmm. kind of feel. I like how every one of these movies has their own uh, distinct personality. And uh, so I noticed... I didn't notice this in the first two because I just didn't fucking look for it. But in this movie, T-West... What directed it, wrote it, and edited it, right? Did he do that for all of them? Yep. Right on. Good and for him. It too. Yeah, he's a yeah, uh, good for him. A guild, uh, guild member of the producers guild. That's why it has the P. I think it's like PSG or PGA. I think it's PGA. Producers Guilds of America. Yeah, PGA. So um, by his name, because he's a, an accredited producer, and uh, yeah, he he. Uh, Produced, edited, wrote, directed all three of them. He edits most of his movies. I think he, if not all of them. Which, to be fair, most writer directors or um, auteurs, <laughs> okay. most auteurs um, edit up words. They they uh, they are very involved in the editing process to the point where they could probably give themselves the editor credit, but they don't. Um, but I, I assume if it just, he was the only editor listed on it. So from what that tells me is that he just literally edited this fucking thing himself. He might've had a little bit of help with assistance and shit. Cause I'm sure he's got enough money to do that now. But uh, yeah, if he's got the only editor credit, which he does, then that motherfucker's in full control of that seat. So what do you think of the movie? Enough of the fucking guy. What do you think of the movie? Uh, enough of your fucking guy. Um, I was talking I, about a guy. Guy. Talk about you guy. You guy. 
I couldn't, I mean, I'm glad you said it because I was actually thinking this might have been an episode where we kind of go back and forth on it. And you were, I was going to honestly be ready for you to call me a snob because I had, but I had the same exact opinion you did. You are a snob. Shut up. I'm not <laughs> taking that away from you. You are a fucking snob. You're a snob. I mean, I am too in my own little way. But like, so we go to the theater, right? You know, watch the movie. Movie happens to us, we, you know, whatever. It ends. We get up. We walk out. There's two dudes sitting in the back of the theater. And one looks over and he goes, this movie fucking sucked. <laughs> and I laughed the entire way to the car. <laughs> I just, I was like, I mean, that way, that dude spoke his fucking truth right yeah. there. Like, I mean, in you're... comparison, when, when you compare Maxine to Pearl, Pearl has a monologue that Mia Goth does this fucking monologue, and I feel like it, it's up there with like Daniel Day Lewis ha- holds mm-hmm. the record for for a fucking good goddamn monologue. Oh, but, so yeah. if I can compare it to that, you know it's that good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, so yeah, like, yeah. and in this movie, it it after yeah, following yeah, so that, you, you hmm. asked me your my full opinion, so I couldn't like I said I couldn't agree with you more. Um, in comparison to the other two movies, it's definitely the weakest, which is sad because it had the most money behind it. It had the biggest cast and you can tell it was trying to be a grander movie. It was a grander idea. There was bigger things at stake. There was more characters involved. There was interwoven stories, but really, to be honest with you, it all fell a little flat at the end for me. I think that that's the thing is like there was nothing about it that I hated. There was nothing about it that was bad. It just didn't live up to the hype. And I'm not saying the hype that was put on to me by trailers and other things like that, because honestly, I only watched the teaser and then I was done. Like I was like, that's enough. I don't want to know anymore. I know who's in it and I know what it is. I'm excited about it because X and Pearl were fucking great. And so the hype that I set up for myself, which we've talked about, like setting up the hype, is that the fault of the movie? And I think in this scenario, it is. It really is because I don't. It's weird that it was it, what I expected as far as like tone and actors and the bloodshed and things like that, but it didn't go that extra step. And I think that you really hit the nail on the head with like the monologue with Pearl. So like what X had going for it is that it actually was more, it was deeper of a movie than what you thought it was going to be. And it had a lot of cool twists to it and the way it just kind of crescendoed really worked. Plus it was a really good homage to the seventies so what's really cool and you pointed this out earlier is each movie is very indicative of the time period that it takes place in so it was like an homage or throwback to those movies so x was the 70s pearl was what like the 40s was it like the 30s or 40s? I don't know yeah. how. Like it was. It was I mean, she's pretty old in X, so yeah, it, they were. You'd have to go back some. Like time. you have to go back some time. At most, 50s. At most. Uh, no, no. And so it, it it had, but the way it was shot had a very 40s, 50s vibe to it. You know that. Yeah, that, the Make America Great Again. Yeah, Make America Great Again. That was the time apple, period. Yeah, apple pie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. Um, you know, it, diners and and burgers and fries. And, yeah, and like root, root beer floats and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and it had it even the trailer, wearing bonnets and shit. Right, even the trailer had that. It, it really brought up that vibe, the vibrant colors, the very you know uh, everyone acting this like extra version of themselves. And then Maxine, even it, it, even though I'm kind of trashing a little bit it still pulled off of that eighties vibe really, really well. And it was like, really like the VHS thing was really cool with the guy working there at the VHS shop. Uh, even though that was like, kind uh, of a pointless ass fucking character, pretty, pretty cool character. I might say, 
Yeah, I, I mean, enjoyed cool. I enjoyed his character and like like his style. Right. I was like, well, oh, I know why he's there. Right. But he's there to actually have an emotional connection for that character later. That's true. And that's, yeah. And that's it. It's yeah. he's divisive. You know what I mean? Right. Like he's used. Yeah. Um. But, but man, it just. I mean, I. Oh, well, we won't get into spoilers yet. But it, that's it. That's that's the journal. I agree with you completely. It just fell flat for me. I also agree highly that because we're in this point in our lives when it comes to movies where back in the day I would go see a movie every weekend. I knew that it was kind of um, came with the territory that every once in a while or maybe more often than not, I'm going to pay money for a movie that wasn't that great. But who cares? Because this was before streaming. This was before everything was available at our fingertips. Now, and it wasn't fucking, it was like $8 a ticket. Now, it's like fucking 14 to $16 a ticket. And, you know, I, of course, have a, a significant other. So we have to fucking, you know, go in pairs. So it's never going to be just me going by myself to see a fucking random shit. So after it's all said and done, I can't help but go, was this worth my money and time to go see this thing in the theater? And the answer to me is really not. I could have waited. And that's pretty disappointing for me for the... I think it's pretty disappointing is your entire outlook on it. <laughs> <laughs> just just find, find something that you enjoy. You like going to the movies. Don't be disappointed if it didn't turn out that great. The experience is still there. That's me being overly positive. But just fuck it, man. That's life. Life is a fucking experience. Not everything is going to be great. But in, but find some enjoyment. There is some enjoyment of going to the movies and seeing the trailers and, and getting right. to watch a movie. And then by the time it's over, sometimes the movie blew dick. Sometimes the movie was fucking awful. I don't feel like this movie was so awful that yeah. I was like, it wasn't I, a waste. I should have did this. Right. Again, I'm used to watching movies in my room, you know, in my own at my own leisure. Right. And I think a lot of people are. Um, you know, going to the movies and having to hear other people talk, shut the fuck up when you're in the movie theater, first off. Yeah. No one gives a shit. Also, how do you ask somebody like, could you please be quiet? And they go, Oh, I'm sorry. And then they're gonna keep doing it. So then you go, yeah. you can shut the fuck up, and then that won't de-escalate anything. No. So don't you do don't even. So you don't even open your mouth. You just let yeah. the, the you just let the shitty people talk, and uh, so that's great. But at least if you were in your own house, you could pause it. Yeah, you know. But whatever. Let's get into fucking spoilers, man. Yeah, let's just get into it. I think we got the that all the shit all general generality out of the way. And there's something about movie popcorn, bro. Yeah, of course, I agree. There's something about that. That's just I don't know. I do like going to the theater, and I, I do think a lot of things suck about going to the theater, but I still like it. I still like it too. I think I'm just more getting jaded about having to spend that much time and effort. Yeah, going to the theater. Yeah, and it. I think the disappointment of a movie going to the theater. I think that's my overall point. Is 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 grand is bigger now that I. Uh, uh, I have all this other content on my fingertips, and I think that's what everyone is going through, even film sure. you know, theater lovers like myself. Um, but spoilers, so we're in spoiler territory now. Yeah, uh, I will. Let's just start with Maxine, let's just get that out of the way. Sure, there's a lot that I want to talk to you about it, and then we can talk about Pearl and, and X kind of in conjunct because there's not like a lot to explain with those movies but you know we're just going just going to fucking talk about it. so okay i'm just going to go right right for the thing that i think is just open it up man open it up and dive in uh the end right <laughs> i knew it i fucking I'm knew go it right into i was it. i was waiting for you to talk to, to get to that well the yeah. end, honestly the end is the dis it's it's like Okay, first of all, I knew it was her dad right from the fucking beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, as soon as as soon as you are introduced to this character and he looks at her in the fucking thing and he grasps the fucking and he's angry. I'm like, oh, so this is her dad. Great. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even try. That's the thing that the, kind of I was like, it, it, even as I'm watching, I was like, oh, maybe it's not her dad because it's too on the nose. And this movie kept progressing. I'm like, oh, no, this is clearly her dad. I don't even know why you're trying to conceal it anymore. I would almost liked it if they didn't conceal it and they just showed her it reveal her dad right at the beginning because the twist wasn't a twist. This movie, but at the same time, it wasn't about the twist. It was about Maxine. I wasn't even aware of that there was a twist. Well, it was supposed to be like <laughs> who, who's the no, black so I was I didn't even see the twist, yeah. so there you go. Yeah, it's it. You know who's the the guy with the black gloves? It's just like, come on, we all know who it is. And I do so like. Listen, I just like every other demented horror fan out there. Of course, we love like Illuminati, random, crazy, satanic shit, blah blah blah, and criticism of the church and all that kind of different stuff. I and love the blah blah blah. I do like. <laughs> I do like I do like that they did this whole criticism of people in the 80s who used to boycott horror movies and how they're really the villains. And as like horror fans and stuff like that, we can all kind of galvanize together and and go, "Hey, you know, we're not bad people, you're the bad people." We're just enjoying content because we like it, not because we fetishize over this stuff. You guys right. are the ones actually hurting people. Well, they were they were specifically talking about Puritan. Right. Yeah. Well, because those are the people that was really picketing, taking the time to go out there and fucking mm -hmm. have the stupid signs and shit, which is real. That really did that stuff did really happen during like the hit the hit. Okay, but the, but the ending, like what, what bothered you the most? I just think it just ended up being goofy. Oh, yeah. Goofy as hell. Like, nothing was menacing about her preacher dad whatsoever. I don't even think he was... I don't think the acting was bad. I just think that it was just so fucking I, loony. I kind of wish it ended sooner than it did. Yeah. Like, she should have shot her fucking dad's head off, right? We got that scene, and then she could have just looked up had the fucking thought process or maybe the thought process came before she shot her dad. Either way, have the lights have on her from the helicopter and just yeah. end it. Yeah. That, it could have ended right there. I didn't need this uh, fairy tale I, ending to this type of story. Yeah. I didn't like, I also the didn't fuck like was that, that about they did this random thing where it was like, she was imagining her life like after she killed her dad. And then that cuts back and she's still just standing over him and then she shoots her head his head and then nothing changes she's still right. famous it's, it's still yeah she's still this i'm like not like usually when you do something like that it's to trick the audience into thinking that it's real and maybe then that was back, the twist you know oh yeah what twist exactly it came right back to her <laughs> just being fucking famous again um yeah no the, the was ending no, was just it was just a poor decision. There was no gut punch in this movie. No. In the first movie, it was brutal, right? You actually started to fall for these characters. X. X, I didn't even know Mia Goth was going to be the main character. Right. I thought the other girl was going to be the main character because she plays Wednesday and shit. Right? Right, right, right. I just thought she was a more uh, wanted actress, honestly. Yeah. Um, And then when it wasn't, I was just like, oh, it's the crazy bitch. Okay. Yeah. And and that's it, it was so very the, so that was a twist for me and right it was very character driven um and just like wild scenes happen like where there two old people fuck and she's like <laughs> underneath the bed <laughs> wild just oh, like, God. like crazy shit that happens in that yeah. whole the alligator killing one of those fucking the blonde haired chick I would have fed everybody the alligator yeah dude that fucking, what an easy way out. Just fucking easy. feed him to the alligator, girl. and um, it was just a it was just a wild movie 
from beginning to end. And when you when you leave that movie, you're like, that was a horror movie. That's how you yeah. make a horror movie. Yeah. And then Pearl was a really cool prequel where the point of view is the killer and the whole movie, you're there's like who are you rooting for? Like, yeah, right. It's a weird movie where it's like there is the there is no hero. You're watching the well, and X, the story of a villain. You figure when you watch X, she was driven to be the killer. Well, also by circumstance, the circumstance yeah. turned her into a killer. You talk about Mia Goth? Yes, in X. Yeah, Pearl. She, I mean, she also she her insanity drove her to be a fucking killer. But you know that's but that's who she was supposed to be. So it's, it's a, yeah, so the origin story for a villain is what's crying crazy about the first mm -hmm. one because when you watch an origin story, it's easy for not the villain, or there's a hero that kind of matches the villain. And this one, it's like, no, you're just through the perspective of the villain the entire time, and you're kind. But here's the here's the cool thing that X did that allowed, I believe, Pearl to be successful is you kind of felt a little sympathy for the crazy old bitch in fucking X. You there was like she she's just not wanted anymore. She was once pretty and she's just trying to be wanted and there was some I sad think, scenes yeah. and there's a lot of psychological stuff that happens and and with that. Yeah. And uh you mentioned it earlier, but Pearl has one of the best monologues I have ever seen. It is up there in the top five best monologues for me, hands down. Like you said, I I also made the connection of like this is as good as uh, Daniel Day Lewis's monologue in fucking There Will Be Blood. I mean, what a haunt! That's a haunting scene. I know I use that. I use the word haunting a lot to describe that shit. But yeah, man, it was that dude's. That dude is telling you he he's gonna fucking he's giving you a speech before he kills you. Yeah, you know. But every every. Every fucking piece of dialogue he had in fucking ga Gangs of New York. Yeah. I mean, oh, shit, I mean, dude. come on. Daniel Day-Lewis is one of the best actors that's ever lived. That's what I'm saying. But to compare me a goth, goth oh, for sure. monologue and Pearl to that, like that, I mean, I, I like I said, I feel like that fucking says something. I mean, that's She's a producer on these films too, by the way. Yep. Yep. I saw that. Um, So, did you make the connection at all? I don't know what her first movie was, but in an X, she had no problem getting naked, right? And Maxine, she didn't have a problem getting naked. However, her character wants to be more of a celebrity, like, uh, you know, a movie star. And I don't know if you've noticed, she really didn't get naked in this movie like she did in the other two. Because of, because like, the, even the movie took the tone of her you know, I didn't like really what I mean is she wasn't shown. Way. She wasn't shown on camera. Yeah, there might have been like a see-through top, but that might have been it. But that wasn't. That, that's only At least is not as intense of a nudity as the other ones. You're 100 percent right, and yeah. uh, I never really made that connection. But I think you're because it's the, it, it's the way she's. Mm -hmm. It's it's her point of view, and she goes, right. "I'm not a fucking porn star. I'm not just this. I'm right. also this. I am meant for this life." So. While she's gravitating toward that, the movie just kind of took that tone with it. Um, I feel like that was kind of that was kind of like a little underlining thing. And then on top of that, you have the director of the Puritan yeah. Two, who's like, I gotta make a fucking name. Like this is riding on me because she's a female right. director. So she's like, right. a lot is riding on this, but on my fucking name and this right. project. So, and I loved all of that. I thought that was all great. And I thought all yeah. the dialogue in Maxine was great. I think that my biggest beef with it is like you put all this time and energy in the characters and the character development, but you forgot that you were making a horror movie. Like I was expecting Mia got the like, so she stomped those dudes nuts in the beginning of it. And that's when I was Which like, Which is hell pretty yeah. fucking righteous. I was like, hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. And then yeah. she fucking murders, she murks this dude, right? Yeah. And then fucking, um, like I was expecting more of that where she was going to have to keep murking dudes because they keep trying to fuck with her. Right. I mean, when she, she was punching the shit out of Kevin Bacon. 
I thought that was awesome. Yeah. She gets out of the car, puts the keys in between her knuckles. Dude, and it's fucking, fucking great. Goes to town. That's what I mean. Like I was expecting more shit like that. Yeah. And I was, I was involved in this movie. And then when the, the, the dad night stalker stuff goes, it's like, this was all forced. And here's the thing. It pay. It's a cliche. And it pays, it's paying homage to the eighties horror films, the late seventies kind of thing. Whereas like, you know, the, uh what is what do they call that the hysteria of the satan there's a there's a term for it it was like the satan hysteria whatever it's called it's like reefer madness but for satanic things oh like like heretics and shit yeah we're during the time period of like the manson family and shit like that people were yeah more, you know the oh, satanic started. panic right satanic panic thank you that was the that was exactly what i was looking for I thought the movie was going to be about the Night Stalker was killing people while Maxine was going through some weird Holly corrupted Hollywood bullshit. That's, that's kind and of how they showed it in the trailer. Yeah, and then they intersected, like mm -hmm. app stance wise, kind of like um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with Quentin Tarantino yeah. and Manson Family. I thought it was going to be something like that, yeah. where like these. And instead, they went this route where the dad is the is doing these um, these killings to make it look like it's the Night Stalker, and then like kind of like as a passerby thing, they at the end of the movie, like, oh, they caught them Night Stalker. Also, I'm a big fan of not everyone dies. You know, I don't like it when everyone dies in a horror movie, but I would like my ending to be a little bit darker, right? X and Max and Pearl, they have these dark but victorious endings. Like, oh, Max, yeah, like X is like, yeah, this bitch made it out, but she's a fucking killer, right? And it, it just left you with this, like, oh, this is it feels dirty but right. And Pearl left you with this, like, oh my god, I, I'm sick that i was rooting for this psycho the entire time it's almost like depressingly charming well in pearl, like a, pearl has yeah. like you know what i mean like pearl has this charm that pulls you in but there's something so fucking mentally wrong and like unstable with it and the fucked up thing is like you start to relate on certain yeah. things and you're just like fuck am i a nutcase too <laughs> and, yeah exactly and <laughs> I just go back to there's just no gut punch for Maxine, man. There was nothing that like when the best scenes of your movie are in the beginning and somewhat in the middle and then your fucking crescendo, your big scene at the end just ends up being like as good as a B action cop thriller 80s movie, like not even great. Like the, the acting was a little over the top. I like the fact that all the satanic followers were uh, parents of children that went to Hollywood and got lost to, to, to their fucking deviancy. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, and these, these, I like, I like that concept, but it was just kind of crammed into other premises. It was just a messy, yeah. it was, it was just a messy movie. I, I, I would have liked to see what I described, which is, what the trailer really was pushing for, which was like, hey, Maxine's trying to make it while there's the Night Stalker happening. And I watched the documentary on the Night Stalker, and that's a really fucking crazy dude and a crazy tale. And it would have been, it honestly would have worked perfectly for this concept. And it kind of did until the reveal that it wasn't the Night Stalker and it was her dad. And then it just got silly. Just a silly fucking movie for like the last, I want to say the last 20, maybe even 30 minutes of the movie. But there are a lot of detective movies that were made in the 80s, early 90s that are silly as fuck. And I think, yeah. I, I really think that's really what this movie tried to do. I agree. Yeah. But also, it's it doesn't matter what this movie did. It's still lackluster. If you haven't seen the other two and this is your first entry to this you're going to be a, a slightly lost at certain scenes right like i i really enjoyed that they had the bates motel yes i thought from from the original psycho i thought that was fucking awesome well it was really cool he was running through different sets and i guarantee you those were i 
I thought one of them was a Back to the Future set, like the courtyard. Could have been. But it might have been Birds or another like horror film or something. But I guarantee you, if you were to like, like look at that scene where she's running through and getting chased by Kevin Bacon through all the different set sets, like each one of those would be an iconic, either an iconic film or even an iconic horror film. And I'm I'm interested to kind of do that. And I I like what I'm saying. Like, there's nothing I hated about this movie. Even the end, I'm like, ah, it was kind. Of, I mean, it's like you said. There's, Ugh, I hated the end. Like you said, it was like reminiscent of the you know the the 1980s films that just kept ending instead of finding its other end. Like and I, I just liked the like, cops. I thought the cops were fun. Yeah. Uh, well, those are two solid actors. Too. I know, but I mean, he was he was so such a, he was such a goofy fuck. That I couldn't help but like even of find course. him endearing. Of course, <laughs> he's a good actor too, though. He's that, a good but, comic actor. But to see him, like to see what happens to him, I'm just like, ah, like yeah. Come on. And here, I just especially feel like, off off camera. You had to do it with both of them off camera, really? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, if a well, very that was cheap as fuck. Yeah, a very le- and that's I think a great way to describe the whole end of this movie. It's like it's I, mean, I said before, it's almost like film exhaustion. We're like, okay, let's let's hurry up here. Come on, yeah. let's get let's let's get this movie over with. And I don't like that. I don't like that. I felt that way. And I think the saddest thing about this movie is I was very much enjoying this movie every step of the way until it got to the end and everything started to unravel. And it really just kind of put me in a weird mood where I was like, I'm starting to get bored with this movie that I was having so much fun with for the majority of it. And it just ended up being like, I'm walking away with this movie going, damn, that was kind of a letdown. There was no cool monologue to save it. Like Pearl had, there was no, Mm. you know, interesting the craziest kill my favorite kill was when kevin bacon got smashed with the with oh the my god that is, Dude, that is criminal that crap. was awesome criminal i think crap. that i think that was the money shot of the movie honestly it was the money shot of the movie and it happened with 40 more minutes left of the movie yeah you know what Can I mean? we talk about her agent and how fucking gangster this dude was that dude was fucking awesome. Holy shit. First if there was ever a dude I wanted on my side, that guy. And that guy takes actor. care of she takes care of business. Yeah, he he's the Ooh, he's fuck. the chicken man in Breaking Bad. Fantastic mm-hmm. fucking actor. Born to play a villain, but when he plays a good guy, it's really cool. And I really like the fact that he was on her side. I thought he was going to be this guy that, like, he was just going to be a throwaway character where he's kind of more of a cameo actor. I thought he was going to die. Yeah, or something like that. But he ended up being fucking awesome. And that's the thing is, like, I every aspect of this movie leading up to the end was fucking great. And it was almost like, you know what it reminded me of? Okay, now this movie is terrible. But it reminded me of X Men, uh, Wolverine Origins, or X Men Three, where you had these really cool, great, fucking mutants that you saw for a scene, oh, and yeah. that was it. Yeah, and it was like, why all this other <laughs> shit that you did yeah. is bullshit? It was fucking lame. I w- would have loved to see the Blob fight more i would have loved to see the blob i would have yeah. loved for you to fucking expand on these story arcs but instead you focused on this lame cw actor for Iceman and the love triangle with fucking rogue it felt the same way here it was like i don't give a fuck about her lame preacher dad who easily the worst actor in it not terrible not unwatchable but the worst and you give him the grand finale. You gave that whole situation the grand finale. Do you think they probably should have switched roles and gave that to Kevin Bacon? No, Kevin Bacon's character was phenomenal. But what no, I no, no, what I'm saying is, do you think he would have brought more 
if he played the father? A hundred percent. He's a better actor. But I loved him as the role that he was. I think he did an incredible job. I think that like in and I'm fine with the build up to a degree, but it would have even been cooler if like who he hired was uh not the crescendo, but like kind of like the tail end where like that is the that ending of like you know the hand reaching pulling out of the graveyard whereas like you never knew who hired him until the very 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 end almost like right before the credits and you realize it's her dad but like then we dunk, would dunk. have gotten that really cool scene where she drops the briefcase down the stairs oh and God. the girl's head falls out <laughs> it, goofy it's goofy like an 80s movie. Yes. It, and that's the other thing I want to say about that. Same to your point. They leaned so heavily into this whole 80s vibe. And I feel like that was its detriment towards the end. I felt like they hit it on the mark perfectly. But you sacrificed... I don't want to say the integrity, well, maybe the integrity of the film towards the end, because yes, you ended it like any other lame eighties fucking cop drama, but we were watching a horror movie mm -hmm. and it, I wanted weird. X was weird. Oh yeah. No, we didn't get too much weird in this one. We didn't. You, you tease really me. Any. You tease, tease me with a dude getting his nuts stomped. And that was probably the grossest scene in the entire movie. And it's the only, like, was the only weird part was when she was getting the the paste on her face to make a, a cast of her head. Yeah, that was it's, it. That was that was give, the only weird part. Give me more of that shit. That yeah. was awesome. And she kept doing these like flashbacks to her killing, and like you could tell that her killing that old lady like fucked with her, you know. And I liked that, but then kind of like the autistic kid in the Predator movies. Just fucking evaporated. It was like yeah. not even a thing that happened after like the last 20 minutes. This literally felt like three movies in one. And it just, yeah. I think it's just, that's that's my biggest gripe is it just was. Now, will I watch this movie again? Oh, mo most definitely. Watching three, all three of these movies together is probably going to be a treat. But man, it, so I watched. X and Pearl right before I I mean right before I went and saw this movie and honestly I think that kind of killed it because those movies aren't even just better they're far better they're far yeah. superior that's it's, what I'm saying they're like, like leaps ahead of this fucking movie oh, absolutely that's what I meant by this movie's lackluster as fuck like the, the X is fine it's a great movie we don't know what's going to happen or where the fuck it's going, but holy shit, what a fucking journey until the end. Pearl, kind of have an idea, but we don't know exactly what kind of ride it is. We just know it's going to be right. a weird one. And then this one, it wasn't too weird. It was pretty straightforward. She was pretty sure of who the fuck she was, and she dominated that character. You know what I mean? And she was like, I'm Maxine. You're going to know who the fuck I am. And she was fucking cockhard the entire fucking movie. Yeah. There might have been a couple of times where she – alluded that she was unsure but even then she had the fucking agent it's like she always had a way out yeah so you didn't feel that she was in danger at any time yeah, agreed so you know that's like when you watch love and monsters right where that kid travels across uh what is it yeah, yeah. fucking thing to see the girl in the other place but all, but there's fucking monsters everywhere. you really think that kid's gonna fucking die at any moment and, but if you watch monster hunter you know Milia Jovovich or whatever her name is, <laughs> yeah. is going to fuck it. You know what I'm the saying? You don't feel, yeah, but you <laughs> don't feel like anything. You're just like, like that's the same director as the fucking Evil Dead movies. I mean, that movie is trash. Resident, you mean Resident Evil? Movies. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, man. I'm sorry, Resident Evil. And you know what I'm saying though? But like, I just felt like I felt like she was just the character. She's like, she's not going to die. No, yeah, there was no sense of urgency. That would have been the fucking twist. No sense of urgency. No, no stakes. 
really. You knew she was like the worst stakes was, oh, is she going to be famous or not? Like, who gives a flying fuck? I don't fucking care at this point. Like, if she makes it or not, like that, that's I'm not going to go. Oh, I'm so sad for her. Um, I have to piss really bad. It just kind of all hit me at once. Okay. So I'm going to piss real quick. This fucking guy. This fucking guy. Fucking go on. Take your headphones so you can hear us roasting your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wanted to see this movie. I couldn't make it to my theater, though. Um, My personal opinion, it's, it's not a bad movie. Just wait for it. Wait for it to go on a streaming site in a, in a month. I was gonna, I was gonna pay like twenty five bucks, but it wasn't even on streaming yet. Yeah, I was saying, just wait a month. They'll go on streaming. <laughs> watch it that way. I did hear you say the boobies not as good as X. Yeah, so me and Goth get you know, there is way more nudity in X, and then even in Pearl, X was like a soft core. Oh yeah, X oh, was yeah. awesome. X was like. I mean, they showed a little more than Skinamax. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was X was fine. Dude, I was watching with my roommate. I was like, should we split rooms? (laughs) 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 It's like, we've been watching these people fuck for way longer than than we we get two blankets. (laughs) 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 Literally, bro. I think I want my own blanket, dude. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing personal. No, no, no. Don't get the woven blanket. I don't want to see any skin. Get a fucking full down blanket. I'm going to get a comforter. <laughs> yeah, get a comforter. The, <laughs> need to hide the motion. <laughs> oh, that's funny as fuck. Hit him with the old wizard sleeve, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You just you put your dick in a Pringle can. Like, who's he's fucking that Pringle can? <laughs> and I've been listening to y'all talk about this movie, though. Just high as fuck. And I'm like... It sounds like X, but worse. Yeah, it's I don't see that's the thing too. It's not it's not that it is it's not it's not a bad movie because there's a lot that the movie has to offer. The acting is superb. It is really enjoyable. It kind of reminded me of and I think it's just like the period piece itself, but like the nice guys. Um there was a lot of movies in the eighties, like I think one's called The Hidden. They're all just, they're really goofy cop dramas. That's what I kind of thought this movie was. I, you know, I, I don't think it was, I, I know it was trying to be a horror movie, but it wound up just being a detective who done it. Yeah. They're gonna, we're going to see some kills, which they were all fine. I mean, how people died was whatever. Was you it kind of like noirish? And... Yeah. Yeah. Like it was yeah. in the city? Yeah. Yeah. It was in L.A. Yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> like, yeah. like right under, right under the Hollywood. Fucking yeah. Oh yeah, it was definitely even have a, a they would, more than. Yeah, they have yeah. A, exactly. It's Chinatown. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, they even have the final battle at the Hollywood sign. Yeah. I'm gonna wait. Like, I'm gonna wait letter. for streaming on it. Yeah, you yeah. should. Hundred percent. Um, because we're gonna go watch Long Legs for the for the next one next week. This coming weekend and i'm way more excited for that movie um and i feel like that one will be worth going to the theaters i don't have any expectations for that movie so oh dude have you all seen satanic panic because i was looking it up when you were talking about it Mm -hmm. and it's a movie from 2019 (laughs) i wanted to see it (laughs) 2019 yeah i'm gonna pull the trailer up later yeah because it's about a pizza delivery person with Satanist. <laughs> Did you ever see X and Pearl? I saw X when we reviewed it. I we didn't I review X. Pearl, yeah, we did. Oh, then I just watched it. Yeah, as we were saying, we never reviewed X. Uh, the other, like it? Um, Infinity Pool was the other movie. I liked X. X was like watching a softcore porn with your friend. Yeah. yeah. So was Maxine. There was a lot of tits in Maxine, too. Um, just not hers. <clears throat> just not hers. Yeah, yeah. Infinity Pool. In, that in movie is incredible. Mia Goth titties, though. 
No, 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 no. I mean, maybe a see through a see through top at at, at at one point, but like, <laughs> well, but like I was saying a bit earlier, like I feel like this movie was taking on. She doesn't want to be a porn star anymore. She mm-hmm. wants to be a household celebrity actress. So they didn't put her right. in situations like that anymore. Yeah, she was more in control of her shit. As as and it's kind of weird as, seeing. It's kind of weird seeing me go out titties after seeing Wednesday. You're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> questionable. Oh. Yeah, questionable. Oh, dude. Mm. Wednesday in X. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Made me. It made me feel upset. <laughs> I was like, oh no, what is this? <laughs> I, I hope she's 18. <laughs> God damn. I was like, damn. You know she is, but. God, yeah. look I mean, yeah, she wouldn't be in the movie if she wasn't. Yeah, for sure. No, she's in. She's in her like mid twenties. But I know uh, I googled it. Yeah, but I, you I saw her titties. I was like, I'm gonna Google this shit. I don't like it. But no, it still make, doesn't make you feel right. But God, damn. <laughs> that's how you know you're old. That's when yeah. you look at tits and yeah, feel bad 100%. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Those tits are too perky. I don't know how I feel about <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? So her Just tits aren't touching her waistband. I don't like this. My all. hands are above my waist. My hands are above my waist. <laughs> there are no stretch marks on them titties. Those nope. titties have not seen life. <laughs> I have oh, oh, not dealt with the hardships of life. Like, that's not a whore. That's not fuck? a whore. <laughs> You're, That's you're why I thought here. she was going to be the main character in X. Yeah, for sure. Because she was the innocent. She was not well, a whore. Everything, everything that was orchestrated in X was perfect. I love yeah. the character, yeah. uh, like the characters. I love their relationships. I love that that bitch boy fucking, <laughs> fucking cried in the shower and then left. I like how like you're like that bitch boy. Oh god, like, he was such a bitch. Come on. Oh, he was such a bitch. Don't give I mean, me that. You, I mean, he probably was, but like, come on. Some people got feelings. Oh, fucking swallow them. You fucking be a be a man. Be, be a, a man, man and swallow those feelings. Go fight the alligator. First of all, <laughs> if he had that big of a fucking gripe about it, don't film. It's like I if my because I was watching. Hey, with man, my, my you girl. are preaching to the choir, dude. You're watching. With why my girl. even be there? It's, dude, why even be there? Like when, uh, when I was watching my girl, she goes, how would you have reacted? I was like, first of all, honestly, if you're getting paid for it, I I don't know. I might have an issue with watching you fuck the dude. I don't really want to do that. Uh, yeah, why? Because you're a bitch boy and you have feelings. You see what I'm saying? Nobody wants to see their fu- unless you're into yeah, being a fucking but cuck. But here's well, this one. But here's the difference between me and that dude. If I was that headstrong about it, I would have looked at that producer and that bench and go, you know what? If you want to fucking do it, then you fucking film this shit your goddamn self, and I'll fucking leave or go smoke a cigarette or whatever. But I'm not going to be. I don't even want to hear her. Fuck that black dude. And by the way, bitch, me and you are fucking over after this shit. You want to fuck? Really? You want to get black dick? You fucking you're gonna be like that you shit. You fuck that guy? I'm fucking those two bitches. That's yeah, it. or something like that. I would, honest to God, be like, yeah, a hundred. Per- I would have. I yeah. would have. I would have. I would have at least stood my fucking ground. I wouldn't have grabbed the camera. I tell you this much: I wouldn't have fucking filmed my girl fucking that dude. What you're supposed That's to crazy. do is look your girlfriend in the eye and go, "This is how you're supposed to fuck," and then you fuck the fuck, black dude. Yeah, then I fuck the black dude. <laughs> Dude, look, at me. look at me! Look at me! Right here. You think I'm fucking the black dude? No. Oh my god! I mean, you're gonna at least you're me. gonna try. No, that dude, black dude, would be fucking me. Come on now. <laughs> what are we even talking about here? You think I'm gonna be the one on top in that situation? That dude had a hog on him too, bro. Good gravy, Miss Daisy. That dude could fucking kill a wildebeest with that fucking thing. Jesus Christ! And they showed it full frontal. Fucking lumberjack. Fucking swinging <laughs> branches, bro. Swinging and banging, dude. Swinging branches. That sounded racist. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. That was a little gonna, rough. We can ignore that. It's easier to breeze past if you don't say it. No, I <laughs> Jesus it Christ. It. Ah. I was thinking like, oh, like, like he's got like a bundle of sticks. But I'll tell you this much. Up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut <laughs> myself. And then film it 
and then cry about it later in the shower. That's something I wouldn't do. And then I wouldn't be a little bitch and just take the fuck off in the car and go, you know what? Try to get fucking home now. Shut up. Real men cry in the shower. But but I do know guys that would have done that. I do think those guys do exist. I believe that that character was that kind of guy. And just because I wouldn't be that dude doesn't mean that that dude wouldn't be that dude. And I believed all of it, and it worked for the movie. You're playing a guy who's playing another guy playing another guy. <laughs> I'm just a dude dressed like a dude playing you another know, dude. I'm oh. just trying to make sense of all this. All Apparently, so was he when he was driving away from why because he didn't want to watch his girl get fucked. Never go for a retard. <laughs> for the right money, you know, a black guy could fuck me. Wait, what? We know that, man. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, like I'm. I, We're aware of it now. Information. Wow. Anyway, it's a very open episode. Very open episode. Open these nuts. Uh, like pistachios. <laughs> Did I love pistachios? More like a boiled peanut. You know? You and those boiled peanuts, dude. Ever since man. your friends started boiling those peanuts, God, you can talk uh, about dude. it. Cajun I've boiled been, peanuts? Yeah, fuck I have yeah. a 24-7 supply of boiled peanuts, bro. All what right. kind of nut are we talking about? Are they just cashews? Peanut. Peanut. Fuck? Peanuts. Like <laughs> boiled peanuts, motherfucker. God damn. Boiled peanut, man. Fuck? What kind of nuts are we talking about here? He said, what kind of nuts? <laughs> These nuts, <laughs> motherfucker. Kind of ele- the, the elephants eat them and shit. Stop uh, it. Yeah, fucking elephants <laughs> eat them and shit. <laughs> so fucking anyway, what elephants, fuck? Ben. You know the really house, the fucking horns and the fucking trunks. The, the horns elephants. and the trunk, even the tusks. <laughs> tusks. Oh god. Like they got fucking trunk. hogs too. <laughs> they elephants do have got hogs. trunks. <laughs> elephants dicks drag on the ground, dude. Yeah, why? You ever seen Are we talking dick? about this? Of course, I've seen an elephant dick. I've been to the zoo. You're about to be seeing it. I've been to the zoo. I've Googled it. I've Googled it. I've looked that up on Pornhub. Wait, what? Is there a whole page for animal cocks? I'm sure there is. All right, Ben, pay close attention. Doesn't have to be that close, though. Put your face on the screen. Look at that hog. (laughs) I like how you showed me this and told me to pay close attention like I've never seen it before. Jesus just... Christ, though. Why are we looking at this? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this on the screen? Also, just... who is show... water... no. hold on, hold on. Who is watermarking this image? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about that? I don't want anyone to steal this big <laughs> I don't want anyone big, to big. steal this picture. <laughs> Look at that, that is wild, hog, dude. God. Could you imagine getting hit by that thing? I mean, I'm just saying. Actually, I can't imagine yeah. it. I don't yeah, like I can. it. I don't yeah. like it at yeah. all. Yeah, and you don't like it. <laughs> God. Fuck. Imagine just laying on the ground, you're sleeping. He dragged that thing across you. He like you like dragons, boy. Oh, you know, dragon these nuts. <laughs> dragon uh, these nuts across your face. face you fucking stupid bitch. <laughs> uh Dude, you know that that dick doesn't smell right either. You know that's not a clean. <laughs> dude, it's an elephant. Nothing about this. The picture doesn't smell darker right. than the rest of his body. Darker than the rest of his body. I look mean, at it. Aren't it's all shaded. of our penises darker than the rest of our body? What is? Yeah, up but with that by the way. Look at his. That was the only part of it that was in the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he stays afloat. He just uh, found the watering hole and just dipped his dick in there and it walked out. Right. It's like, what's up? Can we stop looking at this? Jesus Christ. It's magnificent piece. Magnificent <laughs> piece. Yeah, maybe, we just, <laughs> maybe we keep it up. Oh, fuck. Big old elephant dig, dude. Look at that fucking hog. All right. All right, Sweet. I'm out of here. Back from our travels. To the Serenation Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, much like an elephant dick, you know, I think this movie was too too big of a dick to swallow, really. 
That was that was actually pretty good. Yeah. I gotta give it that was that was a nice roundabout way of saying it. Yeah. Yep. I'd bring it we, we, ad, we addressed the elephant's cock in the room for sure. Hey. <laughs> hey. Oh boy. Oh boy. No, I mean, what are more is there to say? So uh standout scenes of Maxine. Stomp on the nuts, we've already talked about it. The car crush scene, great. And like you said, when he when she lays on Kevin Bacon, her, her and Kevin Bacon's interactions were phenomenal. And those oh, yeah. were two great actors just bouncing off of each other. Mia Goth, man. I mean, she is just a fucking killer. She is a scene stealer. stealer. She is fucking. And this is a movie that showcases so her for sure. Oh, for sure, dude. She murders this fucking movie. And really, none of the movie is her fault, even though she's a producer on it. And I'm sure she had a lot to say. I think this movie felt a lot better on paper than yeah. it was translated to the screen. I think it, the whole dad shit was just too long winded for me. I think it was what it boils down to. And like it was you just said, anticlimactic. Anticlimactic. Just, that's it. I didn't need to see the fucking her be successful twice. W weird. Yeah, bad choice there. Uh, and nothing really just made me feel like this movie really got me when it ended. Because, man, in Pearl, and when she does that monologue, dude, I was enamored. Oh, I, yeah. It was the freeze frame on her face. Did it do that in the first movie? In X, does it freeze frame on her face and as it ends? Because it does it in Pearl. And in this movie... I, well, it's it does. her face, it's but driving. it's like it's a it's the mold of her head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, oh, it does it in the in the in X. It does it in X because she's driving, and it's okay. a close up of her face. Yeah. Oh, right on. Um, so that's, so that's a cool consistency. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always me, Goth, and each of them. You yeah. know, the mm -hmm. one sh shape or form or another and i like the idea of her playing the old lady villain like two different characters in the same movie uh yeah. she killed it as that old lady holy shit an x come on mm -hmm. come on um like x I, was creepy on a on a on a horror level yes well, i think pearl i mean pearl's a horror movie that's more of a psychological thing i yeah. think that's, I don't know. It's no, still horror, but but it, it's a different type I of agree. story. This one, they want they have horror elements, but overall, it's a it's a detective. It's like a well, like okay. So like if you if you pick apart the kill scenes, right? Yeah. Got the guy getting crushed in the car. Great. You got the dude getting his, yeah. Got the dude getting his not nut stomped. Awesome. You got the dude getting slashed up in the movie uh, store. Awesome, mm -hmm. right? It's cut across the eye and shit. Yeah, pretty great. And then that's it. And then all the other kills are done off scene, off it, off camera. Doing off camera. You watch a, you watch a, you see a bunch of dead whores. Yeah, right. That's all, it. They're they're screaming. They're screaming in the closet, and then they show up dead in in a lake somewhere or a pond or whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then at the very end, where there's all the deaths, it's a shoot 'em up. They just get shot and in, in they could have had the weird like um uh three stooges music playing the entire time during the end of that movie right. and it would have fit. You, you know when it, they, they show all the cult members in in the void? Yeah. Creepy, you don't ever see them. You don't I think if they were all hidden yeah. and we didn't see them, if that scene could have been way creepier. Also I don't. I don't really know. I don't really think that mo movie needed that scene. It's just That's a what I mean. really. It was just a really. It was just too wild for that type of thing. I think the, mo the. I think the most interesting part of the movie was the cat and mouse game that the cat and the mouse kept switching roles with her and Kevin Bacon's character. That was the interesting yeah. stuff that was happening. And then again, I think that all the kills should have been done by the actual Night Stalker, and then. You know, you have this weird like standoff between her and the Night Stalker. That would have been awesome, like a 
Oh, that's like, what I uh, thought was going to be. That's what I thought was going to happen. But yeah. instead, you get this weird, like Beverly Hills cop, fucking like the movie with Eddie Murphy, fucking shoot him up, goofy. I know you're talking about. It. Like you mentioned, nice guys earlier. The reason why nice guys works is because the whole movie is a comedy. You know, you, well, drama. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, and that that's the other thing. This movie hits like three different genres, but not. Yeah. They're not connected. It's fine to have multiple genres. We talked about Predator. Predator it's like, is it's like watching uh, was that 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 new Hellboy movie? Yeah. I personally I liked it, but I can see why a lot of people didn't because it just took too many things. It was too disjointed. This movie kind of does the same thing where it's just it was really disjointed. Nothing you know, really you know, it's funny you mentioned that because I actually rewatched that Hellboy movie like a couple weeks ago. And I forgot to bring it up to you because I was going to. Maybe I did. We talked about it briefly, but uh, um, I, I was one of those times I'm, I'm folding laundry. I just want something on in the background kind of thing. And I was like, oh, Netflix has got, I think it was Netflix, has got uh, <laughs> new, the, the newer Hellboy movie. Yeah. I've only seen it once. I remember not hating it, but not liking it. I'll throw it on. It's not good, but it's not bad. And I got to tell you, I liked it a lot more the second time I watched it. I liked that it was rated R. I liked that it had rated R elements. I liked that they they really pushed the envelope and the rated R elements too. Like they didn't, it wasn't like, oh, this could have been PG-13 with like a little less blood. Like, no, that shit got graphic as fuck. I think Dude, the, whole, the whole Baba Yaga thing. Solid. Awesome. Solid. Solid. I think Hellboy was really, really, really good. Um, the guy that played Hellboy, I think he was really good. I liked all the characters that they picked. I liked the story that they were going for. Yes. But the again, well, the reason, Mia Jovovich, like her playing mm -hmm. the Blood Queen or whatever. Great. It didn't really do it for me. I'm just gonna be honest with you. And the whole, oh, and the whole, the whole show off until the end. I was just kind of over it. You know what? I do take that back. I think you're right. But I think I, I enjoyed I them. I enjoyed all the enough. demons coming out. Yeah, I enjoyed them showing all of that shit. I was like, oh, it's hell on earth. Finally, Hellboy is finally like. Now we get to see some shit. They kill her. It ends like that, and you're like, oh. Well, that's why I wanted to bring it up. Again, I like once you mention it because I think Maxine and Hellboy are very comparable in that exact thing you just said. Yeah, it's another movie where it's like I'm enjoying this. I'm liking where this is going. When he's fighting those orcs or those uh, giants, yeah. and they do this, it was the it's the one um, it's like one camera no cutaways trick, yeah. where it's like it just zooms in and out and you know does this really awesome awesome fight scene um when he fights the fucking big boar fey changeling creature yeah awesome so many cool parts in it but it just falls flat it just like all these cool things happen and then all of a sudden it just goes poop yeah and finally just, get to we finally get to see the dude transform into the yeah fucking... if it it felt like a lot of and i actually do know this for a fact because i I read a lot about that because I'm I'm a big Hellboy fan. Um, the producer was getting in actual fights with the director. So the director of that Hellboy movie was the same guy that did The Descent. Yeah. And um, great, you know, movie. he's a great movie. And he he he's, you know, a good director and he had a vision and they kept fighting over shit like style ending all this kind of different stuff and it got to a point where he almost walked away from the project because i might as well just finish it but he had a he has a very outspoken um uh, outspoken trial and tribulation when it comes to that shit. but i my brain i keep talking about because again with x very similar you know in or not x i'm sorry maxine very similar in I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. And then by the end of it, I'm like, ugh, I could have been so much more. There could, you know, the other two Hellboy movies directed by Guillermo del Toro, those didn't make me feel that way. 
they were fun. I wish they were rated R, but I get that in the time period that they were made in, it's hard to make a fantasy movie regardless, let alone make it rated R off of a comic book that's only cult following, not really like a, it's not Superman, for God's sakes. Um, mm, that movie was always meant to be rated R. Like those, I agree. Co- those comics, I you're going to make do it the right way. 100%. Rated R. But I will say for a PG-13 <clears throat> version of Hellboy, the first two are really great. I do enjoy those a lot. Um, now, there's a new Hellboy coming out. Did you see the trailer for that? Yeah. I've got mixed feelings. Everybody has mixed feelings about it. It's like watching the the trailer for The Crow. You're like, I don't want this to be made. Then you see the trailer, you're like, okay, maybe. Well, we talked about The Crow before, but I will say I've never seen The Crow. And as somebody who doesn't have a nostalgia bone for The Crow, I think that I think the trailer looks phenomenal. (laughs) I'm sorry. I know he looks kind of douchey, but he looks a little better in the trailer than but in the trailer. He I don't know if they like I don't know if they changed his right face makeup or if they changed something Something. about it. But in the trailer that I just saw, it didn't really bother me. Um, The trailer looks sick. I watched the rated R trailer that the the Red Band trailer they had for it. Boy. But um, but I think I think Hellboy is going to be a uh, more of a detective noir kind of. I think well, that's what they're going for. They're they're making it very singular story, yeah. and he's gonna and he's and he's trying to. Well, I guess he's trying it, to find a crooked man or something. Yeah, and they, so. they have it labeled as a horror, like thrill, like mystery, and not an action. Sure. So, uh, which is actually interesting to me. Because the first time they're not going to make Hellboy all actiony, you know. Um, I think my biggest beef is that I hope there's a little action. I yeah, me too. Um, I think my biggest beef is, and I hate to jump on the bandwagon, but I do not like the way Hellboy looks. Um, I think the actor they chose is weird. I don't think that he fits the part. I mean, he doesn't. His face you, isn't even shaped the right way. He doesn't. Do you sound think that like? He Your, sounds. He looks and sounds like like the wish version of Hellboy. But where is your Christian going to be? <laughs> when you when we first see Hellboy, it's Ron Perlman. One hundred percent. Um, we like Ron Perlman. He does a great role as he really fucking plays that character. Yeah. And then uh, of course all the wholesome feels. He's born he's to be still he still dresses up and does the makeup and goes to hospitals for kids and shit. Right. So it's like. Oh, that's cute and fun. I like everything about that. It hits me in the feels. Right. Um, and then the third one comes. I don't think it was an awful movie. Why'd you do the hair like that? Why did they, like, yeah. there was just certain aspects that just didn't fit? But I also don't want to discredit any like I don't want to discredit the guy who played Hellboy. Because I like I him. Thought, and, I thought he did really good in the third yeah, Hellboy. Uh the guy who plays his dad, like all of those characters. Like it, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, great but cast. I feel like you were already given the creme, the cream of the crop kind of shit. Yeah. This version of Hellboy, from what it looks like, it actually looks like more designed from the comic book. Like he's a little bit more slender. Like he's a little bit more sleeker. Like in the, that's just my opinion from the quick teaser that I saw. Don't really care. I'll have more of an opinion later on when I see and more of that gets pushed in my face I'll tell you, this is one of those movies where i'm taking what i like to call the aj approach where i'm just not setting an expectation on it it's hellboy i like Hellboy a lot i get to see Hellboy do other cool shit the crooked man story is actually fucking awesome no matter what like anytime someone brings up the crooked man i'm like down because that shit is fucking dope uh, I like that it's going to be like a straight up horror mystery movie. That's fucking yeah. cool. I'm excited about that. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, think about this. We we had expectations for Maxine. Yeah. Well, were they unrealistic? Not really, because X was great. Pearl was phenomenal. And so and Ty West they, is a fucking solid director. They, and Mia Goth is I crazy. Mean, he really yeah. kind of we we thought that's where it was going to go because. 
like so. Not having an expectation. If the movie sucks, and you go, well, at least I didn't, you know, this I wasn't gung ho about it. Right. Yeah. I will say though that the closer it got to the release of Maxine, I don't know why, but the less excited about it I got. And honestly, I, I, I hate to sound this way, but I really think it's because of long legs. I'm just so fucking excited for that movie. So the expectations that you have for this movie. It's so high. <laughs> Dude, See, there you go, man. Like, I feel like the I higher you to. put them, the harder you're going to fall, man. I agree. I agree. And I don't want And I know that's be. a really shitty way to look. You should have expectations because that means no. – you you want something to live up to your expectations because you have a yeah, you have a way of thinking and pride, right? So you feel someone else is going to take pride in their shit. So you kind of want to feel that, right? Right? Is that making sense, or am I just pulling? No, 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 no. no. I I agree with you. And I and think- then when somebody does that, you're like, let's see what they got, and they show you their chops, and it's fucking shit, and you're like, yeah. okay, well, at least he's at least he showed us, right? Well, I think. I think I'm more of agreement with you that it's not the fault to the movie that I put that expectation on it. But at the same time, if you're going to, if you're going to tell me it's the best mo- horror movie of the year, it's got yeah. Nicholas Cage. Like you've never seen them, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's silence of the ma- lambs mixed with supernatural satanic shit. Like, come on, dude, you're, you're, you're telling me everything I want to hear for a movie. Right. I am I'm weighted with baiting breath. So yes, at some some level it's my fault for setting that expectation. But I, at another hold level, on. I, I want to let me take that back. I don't think it's your fault. Hold on. New thought has come in, pl- okay. into play. Without expectation, you will never watch or have to want to see anything. True. So they have to build it up and make True. you have expectations. The problem is, is when they don't fucking deliver that shit. That's the letdown. Well, especially, especially if the expectation is you can only see this movie in theaters. You have to get up off your lazy ass and away from your streaming platforms to come watch this movie. Because guess what? It's going to be worth it. I'm going to tell you right now, if I feel if I'm if I at any one point in time feel like I'm watching Red Dragon, I'm I'm going to be like, I've seen this movie already. Right. And I already feel that way. Dude, and I'm trying good, to just I'm how trying to just follow that. Just, I know, I know just by how we are, we're gonna bring up Silence of the Lambs and Red Dragon when we talk course. about long legs. But I do want to lightly mention I didn't watch I didn't watch all Red of Dragon. the Hannibal saga, so I don't know all of the movies. Silence uh, of the Lambs, Red Dragon. I'm pretty sure there's another one I saw. Oh, Hannibal. But as, Hannibal, far, as far as but so this movie. I don't know, man. Excluding the TV show, there's Silence of the Lambs, Red Dragon, which is yeah. a prequel. Yeah. Um, uh, ba- based off a book. Then there's Hannibal, and then there's Hannibal Rising, uh, which is actually a really good fucking movie. I'm you not sure which. I'm movies. not sure which Hannibal I've seen. Hannibal Rising is the one where he's young. It's his start. It's no. like, oh, it's so good. Uh, so then I've seen the other three. I oh, thought there was, I thought there was more. No, there. those are the besides okay. the TV show. Um, I, and I, I wish there, I heard there was, was good, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna watch it. There was one called Manhunter, which is basically Red Dra- the the book that Red Dragon was based off of, mm. um, and it actually stars Brian Cox, who plays. Um, Slater in the X Men series, he's in a lot okay. of shit. Yeah, uh, you recognize he he's in Trick or Treat as the, the the guy with the with the dog old man, old angry man. Um, he plays Hannibal. And this is mm-hmm. old 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 movie, um, but that's not part of the um, Sir. Uh, Han- oh, oh fuck! Why did I just lose his fucking name? The guy who plays Hannibal. Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. Jesus Christ. Um, it's not part of the Sir Anthony Hopkins saga movies or lineage or whatever that is. Um, 
but Hannibal Rising, uh, I mean, that it's supposed to be part of that universe too, but he doesn't. It's it's a, him as a young kid, so it's not as Anthony Hopkins. So it's really good. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so shit, I forgot I was gonna say. Oh, so but long legs, like he said. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you know, the trailers and 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 critics and fluffy and, and all that shit can make you go. Yeah, you know. Oh, I've seen this movie already, but seeing Nicolas Cage play a serial killer. Oh man, that's gonna be awesome. Um, I'm stoked. I just don't want to talk about it yet because the movie yeah. we have, yeah, I haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. to talk about a movie we're just seeing trailers Correct. for, like, say a little thing about it. But as far as what I'm looking forward to, I'm not really looking forward to anything, honestly. There isn't anything coming out where I'm like, "Ooh, I want to see that." Oh, I'm, I'm talking about horror it. movies in general. Oh, horror movies. Yeah. I mean, um, if, yeah, if, yeah. I want to see Deadpool. Nosferatu. Oh, okay. I want to see Nosferatu so bad that hurts. I want to see that movie right fucking now, and I have to Is wait. Is there anything God. else? Anything else other than that? And Long Legs. I like the Quiet Place movies, but I don't like them so much where I'm excited about it. It'll probably be another six to eight months before I see the new one. Um. What other horror movies are coming out? I felt like there was a lot more that I knew of. I thought there was two, but I don't know. I'm Those are the ones that come to mind. If I don't remember them now, then they're, I guess, not that much worth of a shit. They were going to make a Jason Voorhees origin TV show for Peacock in A24, but it was it called like Camp Crystal or some shit? Yeah. Camp Crystal Lake or something like that. Yeah. Um, what about? But Ron I think that's starting to falter. Oh yeah, I am oh, looking forward to Ron. That's Ron the yeah. one. That's the one I was trying to think of. Yeah. Look at you coming in clutch, Look baby. At that. <laughs> not too high. To, hey, not too high to come in clutch. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That's a fucking veteran right there. Fucking you know, Romulus. Take tape, but you're still coming in mashed, baby. DJ Dump Truck. Peace. Uh, but I don't know. I don't think I got anything more to say about these movies. I mean, I think they're going to be great to watch as a trilogy. But honestly, I think even watching them as a trilogy is going to hurt Maxine, bro. It did for me. You know, I in the same day I watched Pearl and, Matt and X, and I went right in there, fucking fresh off those two movies. So, and you, I yeah, think so you already watched it as a trilogy. At, like, and yeah, that and I think yeah. it really did hurt it in the long run. But man, watching, I highly recommend you watch X first and then Pearl because it had so much more weight. It's like watching, it's like not watching the original Star Wars and then watching in it, the one says Darth Vader's Anakin, it, it doesn't have as much gravitas. Yeah. You yeah. got to watch X first. Don't watch the prequel first. Watch X, and then you really understand that character more and have way more yeah. of a oof, gusto. Normally, they're released, they're released away because they want to have that. That's the emotion that they're trying to hit home. Yeah. Those two movies together... Perfect. Perfect. And there, I mean, you you could watch them alone. You could and th them still be really fucking good. Hundred percent. This Watching movie Pearl. has flashbacks of the other two movies, yeah, or at you, least X. Oh, yeah, there's a yeah, lot of flashbacks, it flashbacks of, X, of so. X. It doesn't have any of Pearl, but no. it's still you know. Yeah, you can really not have to watch Pearl to watch Maxine, but you do need to watch X to watch Maxine. But yeah. it. Man. And look, that's the same thing that Alien did. Alien, then you have Aliens, True. and Alien True. 3, they go back to the one. It's like they try to go back to, you know, they were wanted that connection to yeah. the first one, but different, different approach entirely. And I got to say, I think 
we we touched on this earlier. Not weird enough. Maxine yeah. just was not weird enough. It just wasn't crazy enough. I, I thought I was going to get this mind fuck, and instead it was, I don't know, just got goofy. Yeah, but uh, there were but yeah. there was no mind fucking. No mind fucking. There was fucking, but nobody was, was fucking. Fuck. Nobody was fucking, fucking our minds. Yeah. Uh, so let's just go into the rotten. They were tomatoes. just fucking our wallets. <laughs> they were just fucking our wallets. <laughs> You're only gonna fuck my wallet again when I buy it on DVD. So Which I can one hate you it want again. First? Uh, do Maxine first. Whichever one you want to whip out, Big Daddy. Hey yo. Hey yo. So Maxine, seventy four percent on the tomato meter, and the audience score is seventy nine. I actually one hundred percent agree with this. I think seventy four is right on the money. I think a lot more people saw this one too. Hey, hold on a second. My son's up. Big. There's the cock sheath himself. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> Just look at him. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. All right. Put the Ron Tomatoes back up. We already talked about it. We talked about all three of these movies already. Oh, shut your fucking mouth. Um, so, yeah. 74% right on the money. I think that that's pretty much what I would give it. What's AJ's uh, rating on this one? Oh, I give this three nut busters. Mm, good. Good choice. <laughs> All right. Now do uh, X. Nut busters. My son pissed all over the fucking floor, by the way. Me too. In the in the bathroom. Thank, thankfully, just in the bathroom. Uh, 94% by the tomato meter. 76% by the audience score. The audience can go fuck themselves. This is a 94%er all day long. It's fantastic. I love it so much. It was mm. probably my favorite horror movie of the year when it came out. I give this movie four pitchforks to the eye. Now, this one had a five on the <laughs> fucking movie. I was about to say, what was the, the five out of what? Five out of five? Five, five tits out of five tits. Mm -hmm. That's five one lopsided bitch. Dude, the... Uh, I don't know. They did it on purpose, but the scene of her fucking uh, fucking that dude. Holy <laughs> shit, bro. Good gravy. It made me a flustered. Uh, then busted. <laughs> I busted. Then busted right away. Yeah, they go fucking oh. run to the bathroom and jerk off. Yeah, 100%. He me, said, and, me and Goth is. Boyka. Who? Very attractive one, lady. Definitely got a crush. <laughs> All right. So uh on the she old bitch. That is. Shit my pants. All right, now Pearl. That old bitch though. 92% of the Tamayo meter and 83% on audience score. I mean, Pearl is fantastic. Um, I honestly don't know which one I like more because they have different things that they offer. That's why they work really good together. But man, that model on Pearl is hard to beat. I yeah. I would rewatch the movie just for that monologue alone. Yeah, I was excited to rewatch this movie because of that monologue. Because the first thing I thought about when I was like, I get to watch that scene again. Hell yeah! You know what? You know what I give this movie? What's that? Five fucking scarecrows. Oh my god, she fucked the shit out of that scarecrow. <laughs> Good lord, she's fucking scarecrows. <laughs> That's what I told you, man. Oh, dude, you gotta watch these Pearl. other two movies are weird as fuck. And you gotta watch Pearl. Maxi. You gotta watch Pearl. That I watch Pearl. Wild. I've seen X, yeah, but I watch you, Pearl. Yeah, I watch Pearl, dude. That movie is wild. We were um, talking about it while you were uh, pissing on the floor or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna watch that shit tonight. I think. Yeah, you would love it, dude. Dude, look, hold on. Look at the AJ's rating picture. Yeah, with the third leg. It's just a <laughs> dick wearing a shoe. Yeah, it's fantastic. Why'd I never notice that? Look at no, that. Oh, yeah. The schlong. first thing I noticed, it's fantastic. <laughs> He's got He's one thumbs on. up and one thumbs down. I mean, the dude's, the dude's a genius. 
and a 14 inch <laughs> dick wearing a shoe. <laughs> a third leg, dude. It's a it's third nice. leg. Yeah. Look at that fucking it's fantastic. Thing. Come on. Uh, any of these movies would survive a first date for sure. I think Maxine would survive more than X would. Yeah. There's a whole, X- I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's, maybe that's what you want to have on a first date is all that fucking. I don't know. Maybe Pearl is probably honestly the weakest for a first date. Because no. it's it's weird. Yeah. I don't know. There is a lot of fucking in NX. There's a whole lot of fucking in that movie. Yeah, but they made it like the fucking in X was like nonchalant. Yeah. It wasn't showcased. It wasn't the main focus. Where in X, the fucking was the yeah. main focus. And Maxine, yeah. it was literally in the background. And there's an uncomfortable moment. You got bitches moment. just going, hey, like, and how you un- doing? Welcome to work. In X, it was just porn. Kind yeah. Of. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, also, I, that's in, what we signed up for. in X, there's a dude with a big schlong in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> How's you're that gonna make you be, feel, man? You're going to be a big disappointment to your first date. You're, you're going to see that big old black schlong and look over at our pasty fucking little tiny dicks. And they're going to be like, <laughs> God damn, I made a mistake. He's all <laughs> filming like, why? This <laughs> is like, look at that little chapstick. <laughs> How many <laughs> bagels do you damn. think that black man could put on his dick? Oh, like seven. Oh, God. At like least seven, seven. Seven everything bagels. Are you serious? Whole bagels. <laughs> bagel whole halves, bagels. Man. Not yeah. even cut in half. 100%. Not bagel halves. Not bagel thins. Whole yeah. bagels. Whole bagels. Big ass. New he York just walks bagels. in. He doesn't even have to hold the box. He just puts his dick in the box and says, It's a great set of New York boobs. What? <laughs> Yeah, man, titty butt, titty fuck the butt cheeks of the lasagna. Stop it! <laughs> Try, quit trying to make that a saying. Dude, it I is a saying. Good. Titty fuck the butt cheeks of lasagna. <laughs> that just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> titty fuck the butt cheeks of lasagna. I just stood in right. his. You did what? <laughs> I just stood barefoot in piss. <laughs> That's what life is like for a dad. Man. That's what life is like for a dad. I just literally stood in piss. I could still feel it on my feet. If you I'm single know. and kidless. And you still so stand in piss. I only, I, He's like, I piss on my feet all the time. <laughs> I only stood in my own piss. You know? <laughs> you guys piss in the shower? Yes. Yes, who is he? George Costanza. Absolutely. All the pipes are connected. <laughs> do you do you aim for your feet for fun? No. Oh, just me. <laughs> Fucking animal. Well, dude, you're the kind of guy out here waffles, stomping turds, dude. Ew, just no. fucking smashing them. I, I don't think I've ever got told you guys this story before, but I'm gonna, I think I was like seven or eight years old. My dad's always had hooligans as friends, and we went on a float trip. And uh, I was I was sitting by the beach. And my dad's caveman like friend uh, walked up to me and goes, "Hey, man, you know there's a cow field across the river there." I'm like, "Okay." He goes, "Ah, oh, you know it'd be really fun if we do in the morning. If we just walk over there and stepped our feet, bare feet, and cow shit as the sun rised." And it was at that point in time when I realized that my dad does not hang out with good people. <laughs> oh my God. I swear, guys, it's a true story. That's like Just, mentally deranged shit and, right there. Yeah, Between and, uh, the toes and whatnot. Yeah. And um, he goes, you never did that before. And then he, he goes, hey, Rusty, your son's never stepped in cow shit before. And my dad was like, have you? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, doing barefoot. You never did that as a kid. He goes, no. <laughs> oh. I wonder if that dude was trying to get me to forage for hallucinogenic mushrooms for him. I always thought that maybe he was just trying to get me to sift. I think couch. your dad had a weird friend. Oh about yeah, your f- weird fucking feet fetish as a child. That stepping was so, in shit. Yeah, 
it's a conversation I'll never forget. I was like seven or eight years old, and this you should try like, to forget it and never bring dude, it up this, again. This dude was literally like, You want to go step, <laughs> you could, you want to step in cow shit in the morning? He was very specific in the morning. He's like, There's nothing better than waking up and walking over to some cow shit and stepping because it. that's when it's still <laughs> warm, man. It's, that's what he said. <laughs> cows only shit in the morning. No, the shit is still no, but they do shit a lot in the morning, like every yeah. m- every creature on earth. Yeah, and we all be- shit in the morning because I guess it's no, like, that's very true. But well, in his in his because he went in grave detail, like his philosophy was when it's still cold because it was like summer, right? So it's still a little chilly in the mornings, rising. It's taking your like cold feet, put them in the warm shit. Apparently, there's nothing like it, and I think that. <laughs> You can just go life without that, to be honest with you. I don't think that that's something you need in life. I don't know. That guy seems kind of trustworthy. Yeah, maybe I should have uh, asked him to be just... my godfather. Yeah. Maybe I should have asked him more questions. Like, what other wisdom do you have? Like, well, what else should I put my feet in? You say, well, if you fire. rub a match across your fucking jeans, you could start a fire and sh- you know, fart and blow into it and cause a fuck fireball. No, that is good advice, though. That is good advice. Uh, That's why I gave it. The first time someone told me I could light a fart on fire, I was like, don't fucking play with me. Dude, and then I tried, AJ is mortified. Like, yes, <laughs> we stupefied AJ. He had his mouth agape for a solid <laughs> two minutes. I'm too high for what the fuck you just said. <laughs> I have never once in my life like looked at some shit and was like, I'm going to step in that barefoot. Yeah, that is, that's, that, that, that's the intrusive thoughts that have never happened. That is not a thing that ever happens. Honest to God, that's why it's never left my brain. Because to this day, I'm like, who? Yeah, that's not something he did shares that. with other people. That's crazy. That's just him. That's crazy. The crazy, the fact that he was like so. I've earnest. walked in like I've walked in snow barefoot. The fact that he tried to be like, "Hey, Rusty, you never fucking stepped in cow shit before." Like, no. <laughs> like, but I have never. I never only even because like, they don't even have a history of it. He yeah. was just confident that someone else. Someone does. else did it exactly. How bored do you have to be? That's what I'm saying, <laughs> dude. Like how. Yeah. I'm, how that motherfucker didn't have a TV dude. growing up. Oh my god, he didn't even have running water. Apparently, that's and I've why done, he stepped I've in done, shit, dude. He's, I've done mud, right? But shit is another level. Yeah, dude, I'm a mud river rat. is completely understandable. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm a river rat, dude. I've played in the mud more times than hey, I can count. Everybody's played in the mud, man. We've yeah, all. If there was a big pile like of shit in the mud, I'd probably. Or, move. Yeah. Yeah, if we've made some mud pies. I mean, if you day. if you didn't know there was shit in the mud, it probably wouldn't have bothered you until you smelt it. Of course. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I'm not a country kid, so, like, the first thing, I don't think about, like, I'm going to step in shit barefoot. Dude, even country kids don't shit, like, think that way. This guy I'm was saying that's the first time I've ever insane. heard that shit. Yeah. It was the one and only time that's ever happened in my fucking life, dude. It wasn't a common occurrence. I've but you realize that he's not the one and only person that's ever done that. Probably not. Yeah. They get bored down here. I've heard, have you ever, like, you ever go kill a deer and then you cut it open and you put your arms in it and it's all warm in the gut? I've heard that. I've yeah. heard that before. I've not only heard that. I don't that, know. I've I don't know. That. Okay. I don't know why that's more acceptable in my brain than stepping in cow shit. Because that's like a hundred <laughs> thing. It's like at least you're being at least you're going back to your roots of being a fucking man. Still, you're still a goddamn man with blood on your hands. Yeah, dude, you right, killed okay. that fucking thing. That's crazy. But I'm just saying the violence over the passive. Yeah, that's gross. Shit stepping. Yeah, stepping <laughs> shit stepping. What are you fucking talking about? That's crazy. Well, like, and not even just shit. Cow shit, bro. Yeah. I've taken care of cows before. Their shit. What do cows eat? Grass? Come on. I'm just saying, they eat grass. Is right? that a real question? Dude, Honestly, I don't fucking know. I don't live on a farm. Fucking grass, you goddamn hit. So you're just so you're just stepping in chewed <laughs> grass, really? <laughs> Thank you for joining me. You guys, what do cows eat? What do cows eat? What the fuck do you that think they eat? Up. I was like, they, they can only look they one people. direction. <laughs> <laughs> they can only look down. 
<laughs> they they actually hunt squirrels. God, they're the dumbest fucking animals on the planet Earth, dude. I've never ever seen an animal so so fucking insisting on dying. It's oh crazy, God. dude. It's crazy how they're just like, I just want to die all the time. They would do the dumbest fucking shit, bro. And I would have to save these cows' lives, and then they would fucking go back and try to kill themselves again. It was insane. Fuck cows, bro. Fuck they're probably trying to kill themselves because they don't cows, want to be on a dude. farm. Fuck <laughs> cows. <laughs> Like, and my life. Was, they're one of my the, favorite videos. They're made to be on a farm. That's their home. There's not <laughs> wild cows. That's, that's their home. That's their place. They we domesticate them so bad that they're just like, this is where I'm supposed to live. And still, they're just like, I just want to fucking run into a ditch and break both my legs. <laughs> like, no, so for I, what purpose? I had said this before, but like, I walked in the snow barefoot. I never. That's never come up in conversation before up until this point in my life. I've never told anybody that. I just wanted to do it because I was like, oh, I wonder if I can, how long I can stand in snow for. Yeah, I've done I thought that. that was a, I thought that was a pretty normal thought. But the shit. Yeah. That fucking, that fucked me up. <laughs> yeah, dude. Are you ready for this? A real thing that happened. Awesome a wise man once said, good cars get you from point A to point B. <laughs> Great cars. <laughs> Have y'all seen that video before? No. Point a to point B. It's the slap. It's the it's fucking the, sound. It's the slap yeah. that gets me, bro. Dude, I've that's phenomenal. Literally had that thought. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna slap that cow's ass. Drive by. Never did it because I was like by myself, you know. But yeah, you're like, how far can I hang out of this car and still maintain <laughs> control of it? Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. Because that was driver's side. <laughs> Yeah, he fucking swerved up and Trevor and was like, oh God. one handed at while driving and barely missed the cow with his car. That was phenomenal. That was <laughs> I, when I, I first saw that video, it was flipped. That man definitely stepped in some cow shit before, for sure. <laughs> he knows one or two things about cow ass and shit. <sighs> no, I've smelled, I smell in here. That's the thing is like, I've taken, like I said, I've taken care of cows. For a good portion of my life, and their shits are horrendous. They are they're, gross. They're that's so probably gross. why he asked you because you had cows. This is before I took care of them. He asked me oh. because he's a fucking weirdo. <laughs> he's like, I also like meth. Oh, for sure. Yeah, a hundred percent, dude. The amount of meth in Missouri. In this town. In Everybody's on meth in Missouri. Dude, yeah. it's insane. Not Missouri. I swear to God, it's literally days ago. We were driving, and uh, a fucking meth head bitch was walking down the fucking sh like road, like not on a sidewalk. Just like could get hurt, hit at any point in time if someone swerved the wrong way. And the first words out of my fucking girlfriend's mouth was, "God damn, is everyone in meth on this town?" I was like, yes. <laughs> The answer yeah. is yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You figured it out. hundred percent. It's, it's our secret. so gross, dude. It's crazy. I'm like, even the fucking rich people here are fucking tweaking. It's insane. They get the good math. They get the good shit. They get the gross shit. Mm. I'm staying in some shit now. Is that your option? To do meth or stand in cow shit? Oh, both. It's really the option for most of them. They kind of do both. You need kinda, to move. You need to move. It's like the peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Just leave Missouri. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking bounce, bro. What the fuck you doing? I tried. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have a soul. God damn, if I didn't have a soul, dude. If I didn't Is have your a soul tethered conscience. to the town like your pumpkin no. head? No. I can't leave here because I can't leave my son. Plus, I got my mm. another fucking put him in a backpack. <laughs> yeah, I, tie easy. him to tie him to your back. I'm like we're yeah, going on a easy. journey. Yeah, just like their <laughs> forefathers did. <laughs> we're gonna go look. We're gonna go look at trains. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, that's all I'd have to say. And he would fucking jump in my fucking backpack. Little autistic fuck. God, I love him so much though. Even though he just pissed all over my floor and I had to stand in it. 
he goes, I got a pee. So he ran in there and I'm like, cool. You know, he knows what he's doing. He's potty trained, but he's like half awake. So I, he's been in there for a while. I'm like, all right, something happened. So I go, Vincent, are you okay? He doesn't have his pants on anymore and it's on the ground and they're just, and I can tell they're immediately soaked and there's nothing but a huge puddle on my bathroom floor. And I'm just like, God damn it. I'm like, did you pee in the toilet? He goes, I think so. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, you poor little cute bastard, dude. <laughs> no pants he, on. Just he's not even autistic. He's just hammered. He just got. <laughs> dude, he's <laughs> acting like it for sure. He acted just like he was fucking hammered, bro. <laughs> and then he just goes, he's he's like, I was like, all right, wash your hands and go back to bed. And then he went to house to get you a change of clothes. And then he, he, I go in there to change him, and he just starts laughing at me. Like you fucking bastard! Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm the fucking king of this situation. And He's like, who, who's in charge here for real? Th- th- this diabolical is, prank. Yeah, and this, in this, in this moment, it real you really realize, like, God, dude, being seven is fucking dope. Because he laughs at me, it laughs in my face, and then rolls over and passes out with no worries. <laughs> No bills not to pay. A care in the not world. a care of the fucking world. Just dream. He's gonna wake up tomorrow and he's getting a bowl of cereal that he didn't have to make. A hundred percent. No, dude. You know what this motherfucker is gonna get tomorrow? He's gonna get homemade fucking pancakes with chocolate chips. Chocolate chip pancakes. That's what this little fucker is gonna get with blueberries and strawberries. He's not just gonna get cereal. He's gonna get a spread. And he just pissed on my floor and laughed <laughs> at my face. <laughs> Oh He's man, you weak ass life, parent. He gets, <laughs> he gets to dream about fucking uh, all fucking the trains, trains he wants, man. Yeah, train shaped as dinosaurs. That's just, what he's doing. Trains he's just pissing everywhere. He's a conductor of a train and it's transporting piss. <laughs> and he's spilling it everywhere. Everywhere. But he's going to get there. They're going to pay him the full amount. I mean, like, like li- I mean, what are you going to tell the kid? You're in trouble? Uh-huh. Yeah, I can't. Uh-huh. You're in. <laughs> You're in trouble. This fucking guy. Uh, no, the evening that this dude had was incredible, and I'm completely jealous of it. He got to play fucking video games. He got to eat uh, four tacos from Taco Bell that he didn't pay for, and then <laughs> he got to play more video games. And then he got to uh, go to bed, wake up, piss on my floor, laugh in my face, go back to bed. And then tomorrow he's going to have that breakfast spread. What a life, dude. About you almost you described did. my Saturday. <laughs> How dare you? Minus the pancakes. Dude, the yesterday. The floor happened for sure. Yesterday yeah. I, oh, yeah. I was telling AJ I watched like seven hours of Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> oh, that show. So, I'm about to just move into your house because I want some pancakes too. <laughs> that shit Hold on. removes the wrinkles from your brain. <laughs> so good, though. Dude, me and E Dubs are gonna live in a couch. Dude, We're just gonna I like just how, feed us some pancakes. I like how your correlation was like this is this is the this is how I know your brain is smooth as fucking silk, bro. You <laughs> just went. You just went. You just went. I watched seven hours of Beavis and Butthead, and you know what? I want pancakes from you too. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yet it yeah. made total sense. It made total sense. It did make total sense. Me and Eric are gonna move in, Dude. piss on your floor, and then just eat your pancakes. <laughs> I remember... we'll, be, we'll be in there with your son, just pissing. Dude, just having like, a good old time. You'd be like, "There's so much piss." Grown man, <laughs> so grown man piss. Come on. That is the most vile smelling shit. It's like cat piss. Especially if they're as drunk as we are. Oh, dude. Oh. I've worked at enough bars to know what drunken piss smells like, and I can tell you it is foul. Ooh, it's not good. Buddy. It is not good. You can smell their kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> bad. Oh, mm. It's bad. The worst is like you like you drink enough tequila. You go to take a piss and it, you just smell tequila. Yeah. Mm. It's or like, like when you wake up and 
you take a shower, you're like, that should do. Yeah. I'm clean. And then as soon as you leave, you're like, I smell like a brewery, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing <laughs> cologne. I should have just not. I showed, I showed property uh, to these people, and it was like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, like not even midday, right? Just fucking 12. The dude shows up. And I could already tell him, like, I think this dude's drunk or there's something wrong with him. And I got close enough to smell him and he reeked of fucking vodka. And I'm just like looking at my clock going, dude, what the fuck is your life, bro? <laughs> You're drunk at 2, 12 p.m. on a weekday. Jesus Christ. Or maybe it was his day off. This feels like but a also, I really <laughs> thought I really thought you were gonna fucking sell the, the house. I like I like how Eric on the floor. I like how Eric is looking at me like I'm still waiting for the problem. I was <laughs> like, was there a punchline or <laughs> yeah. is there you're I not was, fucked up on your day off? I don't see the issue here. No, that's the day I work, but I, I sleep from like 1 p.m. to like 8 p.m. Yeah. So being um, drunk at noon, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eric, I know you're yeah, trying man. to give yourself a little bit credit here, but let's be honest. It's 1 p.m. until whenever the fuck your body decides to get up. 8 p.m. Not true. 8 I set alarms and miss them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Your body tells you when you're going to wake up. There's no alarm. Man, man that's going to get that fucking behemoth up. Your Snorlax ass, dude. Dude, I'm so good at getting high and sleeping. Holy shit. <laughs> You're the best at it, dude. I have been practicing for so long. You you have tried to train others in your arts, but none of them could ever compete. I have, though. I have, a, I have some students. You know, the first time I trained, uh, I met Eric, I was training him at a restaurant to be a server. And I hated him by proxy because of his friend uh, yeah. who was a living rat person. I, I know I like <laughs> I, I know this story. Rat. Yeah. So uh, the other thing I didn't ever mention this is like Eric was also super slow. And I was like, what the fuck? I thought he said he had experience. And then... I realized that he was just, he d didn't care because he knew that he was eventually going to get the job. And he knew that it didn't matter if he was fast because it wasn't his tips he was fucking up. Plus, I guess he, was, it. He, plus he was higher than a kite. And he was just, because the entire time, dude, we were slammed. We were slammed. And I have, to train, and I have to train these two dumb bastards. And I realize, <laughs> I realize. Looking back on it, Eric was having the time of his life. I had the worst night of my life. Eric, <laughs> one of the best work days he's probably ever had. He was just like, oh, I don't have to. I, it doesn't <laughs> matter if I do a bad job. So, so that day was his chocolate chip pancakes. Yes. You got your <laughs> yeah, I, did, I did get chocolate chip pancakes that and day. Then, uh, <laughs> and then I was like, I don't care about this job or these people. And then I've only uh, been here for a day. And then we had to work, I believe it was on like the 4th of July or some random ass holiday. And uh, it was and the 4th because I was Team Hot Dog. That's right. So it was the well, that's what I was getting into. And then he created Team Hot Dog. Well, we bonded over hot dogs because we just kept eating hot dogs. And there was other options of food, but we just kept getting hot dogs. And we, I go, how many hot dogs have you eaten? And like, I've eaten like four glizzies, man. And I'm like, <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Team Hot, or you said it, Team Hot Dog. And I'm like, I love this man. You, you, <laughs> you changed my whole opinion over, over hot dogs. Well, you know what? This guy, this guy does get it. He gets it. Gets Another friendship much. forged by wieners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same with me and AJ, except for it was our dicks. The gliz that unites us is also the, the one that can feeds us. The one that feeds us. All hail the gliz. Uh, all right, I got nothing more. Yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, it's actually I'm not tired. I'm just drunk and very high. Tomato, tomato, you know. <laughs> it's all gonna be pasta soon. 
<laughs> That's the name of the episode. <laughs> yeah. It's all going to be pasta. It's soon. all going to be pasta soon. Well, all right. Well, thing. yeah, we ain't in the podcast the same way every time. I'm done with this bitch. Peace. Adios, Machachis. Big swing and dong. <laughs>